good morning students uh, yesterday one student asked uh, while reading ncert textbook in our ncert textbook about a uh, uh, allotropian catenation property in our textbook given except nitrogen remaining all elements of 15th group elements shows allotropy that is wrong except nitrogen is wrong except bismuth in our ncert textbook above the oxidation states variable oxidation states given above the variable oxidation states except uh, nitrogen word is used not nitrogen bismuth one student uh, uh, through whatsapp asked one uh, doubt sir is it uh, true or false it is wrong not a nitrogen it is a uh, bismuth so in nsa textbook also due to some technical problems typing mistake or or uh, uh, corrections small mistakes are the rectified that by using class or by using other materials uh, in last class about uh, nitric acid preparation method industrial important and laboratory method given uh, remaining balance is um, structure of nitric acid and uh, properties and uses of a nitric acid today we'll discuss about um, last two to three important points about uh, nitric acid about its uh, uh, structure of uh, nitric acid first thing is <clears throat> structure of uh, hno3 so the obtained uh, nitric acid is uh, 61 percent is by fractional distillation we'll get uh, 68 and by using a uh, dehydration by using concentrated uh, h2so4 we can convert um, to 98 percentage here in this uh, hno3 in this uh, structure of hno3 nitrogen is the central atom of an element and its valency combining capacity is four only but uh, valency electrons are five are there and oxygen we know atomic number and electronic configuration valence electrons are six here only one is there first uh, take the rough uh, idea about nitrogen it is uh, oxygen oxygen and here uh, again it is uh, oxygen now it is uh, again hydrogen like this either here or here anywhere we can take now among uh, five one electron is bonded with the uh, oxygen like this one electron is uh, bonded with the uh, oxygen it forms one covalent bond sigma covalent bond on oxygen atom six valence electrons are there out of uh, six valency electrons here uh, one valence electron is bonded with the nitrogen then uh, here uh, number of valence electrons are only one again it is bonded with the uh, oxygen it forms one uh, covalent bond so around the nitrogen uh, among five one is bonded remaining four are there already among uh, three unpaid electrons two unpaid electrons are uh, bonded with uh, this non oxygen atom here uh, two lone pair remaining balance finally on nitrogen atom one two three completed remaining two are there these two are donated to oxygen it forms a coordinate covalent bond already on oxygen atom uh, two and two lone pair and one is unpaired it is paired up and it gives a vacancy to get the coordinate bonds now this is the uh, Lewis dot structure or just a structural arrangement if we can take a resonance for this uh, we can take a resonance structure as it is oxygen and hydrogen here this is uh, nitrogen here take a coordinate bond and here a double bond that is resonance that's all only variation is these two so by using these uh, we'll get uh, like this double bond is present between nitrogen and this oxygen atom or in this case between these two so resonance on the basis of resonance 
these uh, nitrogen oxygen and nitrogen oxygen bond length is the same that is uh, 121 picometers this is experimentally determined either here also same 121 uh, picometers near approximately now here the bond angle is uh, 120, uh, 130 degree is now nitrogen and oxygen somewhat uh, bond length uh, increases because uh, sizes are greater that's why its bond length increases its bond length is uh, 140.6 pm picometers your size is small hydrogen compared to this uh, so finally it's a length also less that is uh, nearly 96 uh, picometers here between this bond angle is uh, 102 degrees better you remember the values in examination uh, generally they won't ask anyhow remember this based on this uh, sigma bonds are here one year one coordinate bond also sig sigma in this uh, nitric acid nitrogen atom undergoes uh, sp2 hybridization because the number of sigma bonds are how many only three one s orbital remaining uh, two p orbitals that's why sp2 if it is sp2 hybridization geometry is uh, planar geometry triangle planar geometry planar means that's why nearly 120 to 130 degrees geometry is clear structure is clear okay structure of uh, nitric acid then uh, next one is uh, properties your uh, properties of uh, HNO3 nitric acid your uh, pure concentrated uh, your uh, pure concentrated uh, laboratory HNO3 is 68% uh, uh, by mass 68% uh, by mass present its uh, nature in the laboratory pure is colorless uh, liquid at uh, room temperature it is now here uh, in uh, aqueous medium in aqueous uh, medium and aqueous medium it uh, acts as a uh, strong acid strong acid and it produces uh, h plus ions see it? here uh, hno3 when dissolved in uh, water concentrated um, hno3 here it produces uh, it produces uh, h plus plus no3 minus 1 nitrate ion produce react with this it forms a h3o plus plus no3 minus 1 is formed when dissolved in water, it produces a proton, proton donor, acts as a strong acid. According to proton transfer theory, this is a hydronium ion. Hydronium uh, ion it is. So, this hydronium ion also called a hydrated hydrogen ion. In uh, first PUC, first year 11th standard. In uh, equilibrium, we know based on uh, acid base theory, they are uh, one of the most important conjugate acid base theory. There will get this hydrated hydrogen ion concept. They are uh, H3O. Plus. Now, here uh, in these properties, concentrated HNO3 acts as the strongest oxidizing agent. They are uh, concentrated. Uh, concentrated uh, HNO3 are uh, acts as uh, strongest uh, oxidizing agent OA oxidizing uh, agent strongest uh, oxidizing agent it is and this uh, oxidizing capacity OA capacity OA capacity of uh, concentrated HNO3 very very important depends on uh, depends on uh, first one is uh, concentration concentration 
second thing is uh, temperature temperature third one is nature of material nature of uh, material used uh, in this process these are the three important uh, points depends on uh, oxidizing capacity of concentrated hno3 your uh, concentrated hno3 cannot affect or cannot react easily with the noble metals like uh, silver and gold generally cannot uh, reacts so here uh, are uh, noble metals noble metals like uh, your uh, gold and uh, platinum do not react do not uh, react with this so based on this some important chemical properties and uh, some metals some metals like uh, chromium and aluminium uh, with the uh, concentrated uh, hno3 shows passivity passivity means do not react initially it reacts but further reactions cannot takes place for example here uh, take here uh, concentrated uh, this is a uh, concentrated uh, hno3 this concentrated hno3 into this just uh, inserted aluminum rod or maybe a chromium rod aluminum or chromium strip is introduced into this here uh, it acts as a oxidizing uh, agent generally this aluminum chromium do not show any chemical reaction with this passivity means uh, chemically inactive uh, that is due to the formation of a, a thin film metal oxide on the surface of this um, aluminum or chromium this is this is a thin thin film metal oxide this thin film metal oxide that is uh, al2o3 if it is a cr cr2o3 is formed chromic oxide or aluminum oxide this uh, chromic and aluminum oxides do not uh, carry do not uh, react these are uh, do not uh, react or do not take place uh, further reactions further reactions do not take place that's why these are uh, passive passivity means do not react but some metals based on their concentration and temperature and the nature of material some are reacts and uh, some are reacts means it gives the different uh, by products or the different uh, products based on their concentration temperature nature of materials okay now here are uh, two important chemical reactions are there one is uh, uh, chemical properties of uh, concentrated HNO3 with the uh, metals and non metals. Two are uh, very, very important uh, reactions. <clears throat> yeah, uh, one of the most important is with the uh, metals. With the uh, metals means yeah, uh, copper and uh, zinc uh, metals. These two are very, very important then some are uh, with the non metals are there i'll explain that uh, non metallic uh, concept compared to balancing here main what are the products liberated that is uh, very very important and also your yeah, concentration is very very important here yeah, the copper is reacted with uh, hno3 that is uh, concentrated uh, hno3 or first take here uh, dilute uh, hno3 on heating at certain temperature so here the concentration is different same here the copper is reacted with uh, hno3 with the uh, concentrated uh, hno3 on uh, heating against some uh, certain different uh, products so here the reactivity chemical properties of hno3 depends on concentration some cases diluted some cases concentrated and temperature so are the with the copper and zinc are two conditions are there here two properties are there here 
So in copper, better you take your uh, three moles of copper and eight moles of uh, HNO3 in dilute conditions. It gives like uh, are the three Cu NO3 taken uh, twice plus water uh, HNO uh, H2O plus. Yar will get the uh, NO nitric oxide gas is formed in dilute conditions. <laughs> Now your uh, nitrogen atoms are your uh, 2, 3, the 6, but your 8 are there. Remaining 2 balance, that's why take your the 2 moles. Hydrogen atoms are your 8 are there, your uh, 2, that's why take your the 4 moles and everything is balanced. When it is concentrated, your 1 mole and your uh, 10 moles, your will get uh, Cu NO3 taken uh, twice plus. 5H2O plus NO2 gas is liberated. Nitrogen dioxide gas. Here um, 10 are there out of 10 already here. Uh, 2 completed. 2 completed. Then remaining here uh, out of 10 how many? How many required here? 8. 10 HNO3. If you can take uh, like this. 10. So here, uh, instead of uh, uh, copper dilute and concentrated, if you can take uh, your uh, zinc metal, same conditions. Sorry, your, uh, better you take uh, 4 moles, not balanced here. Your, uh, see it? 4 means here uh, 2H2O. Already here, uh, 2 are there. Take here, it is uh, 2 moles. It is balanced. Now clear? Now here the 1, 4 conditions here are 3 and uh, like uh, 10. 3 and uh, 8. So here uh, copper is reacted with the uh, dilute and also copper is reacted with the uh, concentrated. Then we will get uh, in the uh, dilute condition we will get uh, nitric oxide this is. Nitric oxide but here uh, nitrogen uh, dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide. Same in store this here. Yeah, if you can take a, a zinc plus HNO3, zinc plus HNO3, a dilute our conditions, then we'll get a one gas. And the same thing here the zinc and the HNO3 concentrated HNO3 on heating will get a one condition. Now it also just like this here we'll get uh, zinc uh, nitrate ZnNO3 taken twice plus uh, water plus air will get uh, N2O dinitrogen uh, oxide this is. Whereas in case of concentrated we'll get uh, ZnNO3 taken twice plus your the H2O plus your N2O Sorry, NO2 is formed, nitrogen dioxide is formed. This is dinitrogen monoxide, monoxide. This is uh, nitrogen dioxide. Nitrogen dioxide is there here. So these two are important reactions. Balancing here, one mole, take here also four moles. They are the same. They are the two moles and they are the two moles, same thing. In um, both cases, like uh, copper and uh, zinc in concentrated method is same. There is no change. Here also main product is nitrogen dioxide. Here also main product is nitrogen dioxide. Both are the same. But the variation is only dilute conditions. That's why these two are uh, very, very important. These two are uh, very, very important conditions. Take here uh, 4 and uh, 10 moles. You are the 4 uh, ZnNO3. You are uh, 5 H2O. Like your 8 are there. Remaining 2 balanced here. N2O balanced. Now these are very very important. Maybe these two reactions. Uh, maybe they will ask in object you. When copper is reacted with uh, dilute HNO3. What is the gas liberated? What is the oxides of nitrogen liberated? They will create option number one. This is second option. This is the third option. Maybe fourth option is uh, 
n2 o3 like they'll create uh, four different options so answer is this if it is uh, zinc n2 in a concentrated condition both are the same so like uh, these chemical reactions better you concentrate uh, while reading hno3 like these important uh, reactions because obtained uh, in all the cases uh, copper nitrate copper nitrate uh, water water air water water common zinc nitrate zinc nitrate but oxides of nitrogens are the main product uh, they are the very, very important uh, to confuse the children they'll ask based on these questions clear with the uh, metals clear the ne next one is uh, with the non metals so are the concentrated hno3 also oxidizes non metals to the corresponding uh, acids corresponding uh, compounds here uh, uh, for objective maybe if they ask uh, no need to balance reactions better you remember main important uh, concept here uh, with the uh, non metal second one is with the uh, non metals your uh, non metals are here uh, for given in our syllabus i2 carbon your uh, s8 molecule and uh, p4 molecule these are the four important uh, reactions for example here the i2 is reacted with the hno3 concentrated nitric acid it is uh, concentrated on heating will get the HIO3 like uh, iodic acid plus your water plus nitrogen dioxide is formed. This is like uh, carbon reacts with uh, HNO3 nitric acid. I guess carbon dioxide plus water plus NO2 gas. Your S8 molecule react with the HNO3. Now it gives your H2SO4 plus water plus NO2 gas liberated. Now your the P4 molecule reacts with the HNO3. Now your H3PO4 phosphoric acid water plus NO2 gas is liberated. Once we can observe all the four important uh, chemical properties with the non-metals, all the byproducts are same, or maybe products are same. Like uh, water, 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 air, nitrogen dioxide, all are the same, but these are very, very important. So, what is the main product when you are the uh, iodine is reacted with the concentrated HNO3. What is the product obtained? Iodic acid, HIO3. Balancing, uh, based on that uh, first year redox reaction balancing, we can easy to find out. But main in public examination, they'll ask uh, instead of balancing, what are the main products obtained? Here uh, with iodine, iodic acid, carbon dioxide, sulfuric acid and uh, phosphoric acid. These are the some important properties with the metals and non-metal. Finally, here uh, uh, one of the most important chemical properties there that is very very important for uh, uh, 12th standard or for PU level in uh, laboratory for practicals. Already in first year completed in practicals, brown ring test is there, one of the most important tests. Regularly they'll ask in objective as well as in uh, theory or in uh, any uh, laboratory practical to find out the nitrate ion. One of the most important uh, tests for nitrates. <clears throat> Brown ring uh, test. Very, very important test it is. For uh, PU level in the laboratory, this is a very, very important test that is uh, CT confirmatory test for nitrate uh, ions. Nitrate ions means here uh, NO3 minus 1 ion. To find out the uh, nitrate ion, brown ring test is a very, very important test. So, are the 
in a uh, given unknown salt uh, may be sodium nitrate uh, NaNO3 or uh, potassium nitrate, barium nitrate, uh, this is uh, barium nitrate or uh, strontium nitrate, like uh, these are the some important uh, nitrates of uh, metallic uh, salts. So in the laboratory here, uh, and watch glass will give unknown salt. Uh, this is the unknown salt. That uh, unknown uh, salt uh, in uh, la 12th standard, 12th standard level or PU level, one uh, cation is present, that is uh, Br basic radical, and uh, one anion is present, that is uh, acidic radical. One basic and acidic radical. For example, that unknown salt is uh, NaNO3. Now, here Na plus and NO3 minus 1. This is uh, Br. Basic radical, this is uh, AR, acidic radical. Like uh, strontium nitrate is there, for example, SrNO3. Taken twice, it gives SR plus 2 plus NO3 minus 1, 2 moles. So this is some. Um, Br basic radical and it is uh, acidic uh, radical AR. So to find out this presence of uh, nitrate ion in a given unknown salt is present or not, we don't know. That's why for that uh, confirmatory test. Now, first here the PT preliminary test for that. Taking a, a, a test tube like uh, in this unknown salt, it is unknown uh, unknown salt now to this uh, add concentrated uh, h2so4 uh, sulfuric uh, acid just observe it there is no observation there is no gases liberated now to this uh, copper turnings copper turnings are added and heated strongly any reddish brown vapors are liberated red reddish brown vapors are liberated that indicates that uh, indicates presence of uh, presence of uh, NO3 minus 1 ion in a given unknown salt. Only a preliminary test this uh, identification test is primary test is when uh, uh, unknown salt is heated with just uh, concentrated HNO3 without copper turnings. Uh, there is no clear observation. There is no any other gases liberated from these. That is uh, generally absence of second group radical Br minus. But whereas uh, to the same solution, copper turnings are added, copper pieces are added, uh, CO turnings, then heated strongly, then it gives uh, reddish brown vapors indicates the presence of oh, NO3 minus 1. Either maybe like this, like this, like this, any one. That is identification. To confirm that, uh, here a uh, brown ring test is there. CT for nitrate ion. This is the identification test. For this uh, CT, confirm a test. Uh, first thing is, better you prepare uh, corresponding salt solution. This is first. Second one is uh, freshly, freshly prepared uh, uh, FeSO4 solution required. Then third one is concentrated uh, H2SO4 required. These three are very, very important to do the confirmatory test for uh, nitrate ion. That is uh, a brown ring test. So this is very, very important. Freshly prepared. Freshly means already prepared uh, ferrous sulfate easily oxidizes that's why while doing this test only better you prepare uh, FeSO4 in laboratory FeSO4 salt is available by using that salt just to take uh, distilled water and uh, shake it will get a clear uh, solution the obtained clear solution is called a freshly prepared FeSO4 see here this is the one test tube in this uh, test tube, uh, take uh, unknown salt solution. This is uh, uh, unknown salt solution. Means this is the salt to this uh, water is added. H2O is added. This is called a salt uh, solution. Okay, prepared. First one. Second thing is uh, taking another test tube. 
in another test tube to this take uh, FeSO4 crystals uh, LH, uh, uh, green color FeSO4 crystals are available to this uh, again water add it and uh, stir it uh, it gives a clear solution that is called uh, freshly prepared FeSO4 solution while doing brown ring test uh, generally students they'll uh, uh, generally uh, conduct they'll uh, carry the experiment in one test tube only they will take a salt and uh, they will take uh, freshly prepared in one test tube only they will add water and they'll uh, stir it uh, shake it that is wrong don't take uh, at a time uh, two salt solutions in one test tube after preparing separately these two important salt solutions in third test tube this is the third test tube in this uh, third test tube equal proportion need if it is uh, one ml take here also one ml one ml then take uh, equal proportionate uh, salt to solution as well as uh, freshly prepared that is uh, equal amounts approximately equal proportionate take care the are the salt to solution we don't know that salt containing nitrates or any other uh, basic group radical salt solution plus uh, FeSO4 uh, solution then uh, stir it while preparing uh, FeSO just add one or two drops of H2SO4 to acidify that now the uh, mixed equal proportion uh, mixed salt solution and FeSO4 in third test tube in this only take an inclined position by using a uh, holder like uh, test tube holders like this and take in another uh, test tube uh, concentrated H2SO4 now this uh, concentrated H2SO4 add drop by drop along the sides of the test tube like this is the holder by using this holder just add a concentrated H2SO4 drop by drop here. At the junctions of the two layers, this is the salt solution layer. This is the concentrated H2SO4 layer it is. So at the junctions of the two layers, when all this H2SO4 interfere with this, at these two layers, there exists even a ring like a structure like this is uh, at uh, two layers are the junction at uh, interference that is uh, faces here uh, a brown ring is produced brown ring is developed that indicates the given salt solution uh, contain contain uh, NO3 minus one ion clear confirmation so while doing this experiment carefully better uh, prepare like a uh, salt solution and freshly prepared FeSO4 and while adding constant H2SO4 also carefully add one by one people will do generally mistake uh, at this preparation of these at a time uh, people will take uh, at a time in one test tube uh, they will take uh, salt plus FeSO4 then to this they'll add water then they'll stir it they'll uh, to, the, the, to this they'll add h2so4 directly on gate uh, for this we'll get a black color solution black uh, solution will get it we can't identify this is wrong that's why separately salt to solution freshly prepared separate test tube take a third test tube in the third equal proportionate and uh, clear uh, solution uh, stir it and to that in inclined position just uh, add drop by drop h2so4 will get the uh, a brown ring at the junctions of the two layers if it contain already we can uh, uh, detect the presence of a nitrate by using some preliminary test by heating our uh, test with the uh, concentrated uh, h2so4 and uh, copper turnings for this very very important uh, thing is uh, this is the theoretical explanation main important thing is uh, for objective and um, for uh, any other competitive examination very very important thing is here uh, very very important uh, thing is chemical reactions this is uh, a wrong uh, combination uh, leave it now in this uh, generally nitrate salt means here NO3 minus 1 is present 
and we are adding uh, FeSO4 means plus 2 reaction. Plus 2 is there. Ferrous sulfate. Plus 2. And here the water we are using and sulfuric acid we are using. That's why you are the 4 moles of uh, H plus ions. You are the 3 moles. Ionic reaction. So, while adding salt to solution, freshly prepared and adding H2SO4, this chemical reaction mainly involved. Nitrate ion, ferrous ions and uh, this uh, H plus ions, it gives this uh, ferrous converted into ferric oxidizes. The ability of uh, nitrogen depends on uh, Fe plus 2 ion. So, to identify the presence of this, mainly depends on concentration and ability of uh, Fe plus 2. Then it gives like uh, Fe or Fe plus 3, 3 moles plus 2H2O, water molecule, yeah, 2H2O plus your NO. This is the nitric oxide gas is liberated. This is the very, very important reaction. The liberated nitric oxide gas immediately absorbed by one complex, that complex is formed in the solution, that is um, FeH2O taken uh, 6 plus 2, it is a complex is formed in this uh, salt solution. Immediately uh, absorbed by this uh, uh, complex is absorbed, this uh, NO gas, nitric oxide gas, then it forms like one complex. That is Fe, H2O taken 5, NO, power here plus 2, plus out of 6 mole, only 5 moles, plus H2O is formed. This is the brown ring formula complex compound. Here the formed brown ring formula is here, Fe, H2O taken 5, NO power uh, plus 2, this is, this is the very, very important formula. The formula of brown ring formed in the uh, detection or confirmatory test for uh, nitrate ion is, this is a very, very important. Now here, uh, uh, after this uh, complex formation, uh, uh, so many such a chemical reactions and so many complex compounds are there in inorganic only in coordination compounds, one of the most important uh, Chapter there will explain IUPAC name rules and regulations. How to find out the oxidation state? Anyhow, for this I will write uh, for this I will write uh, one complex full complex that is Fe H2O taken uh, five NO power uh, plus two. This is the ion. These two ions are satisfied by like this also we can write Fe H2O taken uh, five yeah, sorry, NO, yeah, SO4 also present. Also we can create because the sulfate ions are present in a solution. This is the minus 2, this is the plus 2. So an examination they'll ask like this or like this model. So based on this, IUPAC name and oxidation state very, very important. So here in coordination compounds, one of the most important uh, chapter in coordination compounds, IUPAC name of a complex compound, rules and regulations are there. Anyhow, just a simple idea, IUPAC, IUPAC uh, name, name of uh, this compound like uh, AFE, H2O, taken 5, NO power uh, plus 2 for this IUPAC name is, it is a cationic complex because plus, there is no special ending, rules are there, 5 are there, here its oxidation state is plus 1, nitrosyl. Now here uh, we can write uh, 5 are there, that's why its name, its name is uh, Penta, IUPAC name, Penta, water means Aqua or Aqua, Penta, Aqua. NO plus means here the nitrosyl, nitrosyl. And then immediately we can write iron, that is instead of iron we can write um, nitrosyl ferrates or iron, nitrosyl iron, your oxidation state is only one is there, 
Now, your ion is there. That's why we can write its name is a complex ion. Just uh, remember the name in uh, coordination compounds. Next, uh, coming in organic unit, there are some important rules and regulations to write its IUPAC name. They will explain very clear uh, rule. How to write? How to write its name? Ligands. So rules and regulations are there. This is the IU, correct uh, IUPAC name of this complex. If it is uh, SO4 is there, instead of writing complex ion, better you write uh, sulfate. Everything is same. Your uh, penta aqua nitrosyl iron 1 sulfate. Everything is same if they last. Now, your uh, 1 indicates your oxidation state of iron is plus 1. Very, very important. Your oxidation state of uh, iron, Fe, in uh, brown ring uh, complex, brown ring uh, complex is equal to plus 1. Very, very important. So, here how to calculate means here Fe, H2O taken uh, 5, NO power uh, plus 2 is there, plus yeah, we don't know. Let us consider here X plus water molecule is neutral. That is 5 into 0. Nitrosyl is plus 1. Only 1 is there. Plus 1 into 1 is equals to their oxidation state is plus 2. Now, here the X plus 0 plus 1 is equals to plus 2. X is equals to plus 2 minus 1. That is plus 1 oxidation state. That we can write in a Roman number. Plus 1. Roman number 1 plus 2, Roman number 2. Rule is there. There in coordination are the complex compounds will explain very clearly. Okay. This is the uh, brown ring test. In your textbook only theoretical explanation, two reactions given here. But a clear information given how to identify. Means first uh, preliminary identification test, then confirmatory test and everything about uh, uh, any objective, either CET or NEET or J, if they'll ask any objective, these are very, very important. Better you note down all these in our notes. Or uh, with you available uh, beside you, any textbook, better you note down there only in textbook. Very, very important. This is the brown ring uh, formula. Formula of brown ring. IUPAC name, oxidation state. So, what is the gas liberated? Everything important. Clear? Finally, only one simple concept about uh, nitric acid uses. Just style uh, two to three important uses I'll write. Just note down here. Uh, use of uh, HNO3 nitric acid. Use of uh, HNO3 concentrated uh, nitric uh, acid. Uh, once we can observe uh, in uh, first PUC, uh, 11th standard in benzene, nitration of benzene is there. First year, very, very important. Mechanism of nitration of benzene. In that uh, nitration of benzene, Nitration of uh, benzene C6 and uh, H6. Here are uh, concentrated uh, HNO3 and uh, concentrated uh, H2SO4 uh, uh, used as nitrating uh, mixture. This, this is so here are uh, uh, nitric acid. Uh, main important nitric acid in this nitration of uh, C6 and A6 benzene, it create uh, one electrophile that is uh, NO3, uh, NO2 plus. Now here under these uh, conditions, here benzene is reacted with uh, nitric acid in the presence of uh, H2SO4 will get uh, nitrobenzene NO2 plus H2O is formed. Now, yara, it uh, create uh, NO2 plus plus OH minus. It is uh, electrophile, it is nucleophile. Either here or here, anywhere this hydrogen atom react with the uh, 
OH minus water eliminate and nitro benzene is formed. Nitro benzene. Not only this one, simple example in first year, variety of uh, organic uh, compounds are uh, prepared by using uh, HNO3 that is uh, TNT, explosive, trinitrotalin. So to prepare uh, trinitrotalin, yeah, we can use concentrated. Nitroglycerin, also another important term, chemical substance which is used as explosive agents. Now here, uh, uh, to prepare so, uh, so many nitrogenous fertilizers, your yeah, ammonium nitrate uh, NH4NO3 is uh, prepared by using concentrated HNO3. It is used to prepare uh, fertilizers, nitrogenous uh, fertilizers. And here, yeah, uh, concentrated H2SO4 uh, HNO3 is used as an uh, oxidizer. Oxidizer in a rocket fuel, very, very important. In a rocket fuel, it is used as an oxidizing agent, oxidizer. And also, finally, it is used in a etching of, etching of a glass. And also, your pickling, pickling of a stainless steel. Stainless uh, uh, steel. Yeah, uh, these are the, some important uh, uses. To clean the glass apparatus, we can use concentrated. Etching means like we can use concentrated uh, HNO3. These are the some important uh, uses of uh, HNO3. Better you read from textbook and note down all these. A variety of uses are there based on this. So this is a uh, complete uh, explanation about uh, uh, nitrogen and its compounds. In 15th group elements, uh, <coughs> nitrogen plus two important uh, compounds are there. About uh, nitrogen compounds clear. That is about uh, dinitrogen, ammonia, nitric acid and uh, oxides of uh, nitrogen and some hydrates of uh, nitrogen. About nitrogen clear. Then simple topic is present that is um, about the phosphorus. Today I will start phosphorus, I will introduce. Uh, remaining 10 minutes time is there, I will introduce uh, phosphorus and um, I will complete uh, one of the most important compound of phosphorus. One more class I want to complete this uh, uh, 15th group elements in uh, P block. Okay? First uh, 15th group only somewhat uh, uh, big chapter, big units and uh, everything is new. Better you concentrate of 15th group elements. Remaining elements almost all similar. Explanation is similar. Same introduction, preparation methods, properties of uh, related uh, group. 16th group compounds, 17th group compounds, and 18th group. That's all. Okay. Next one is uh, about uh, phosphorus. Phosphorus. We know about phosphorus. This is the second element of uh, 15th group elements. What is the atomic number of phosphorus? Atomic number of phosphorus. Add 8, 7 plus 8. 15. Group number and atomic number same for this. So the phosphorus atomic number is 5, 15. Electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2 and uh, 3p315 and its outermost orbit, uh, there is a d orbital, vacant d orbital. That's why phosphorus shows some uh, different properties with the nitrogen. In its outermost uh, orbit, uh, here uh, 3s is paired and uh, 3p is uh, unpaired, it is. And uh, 3D orbitals are vacant, like uh, this is uh, ground state uh, electronic uh, configuration. Whereas uh, uh, in other compounds, one electron may be excited from uh, 3S2 to 3D, that is the first excitation state. That is 3S1, 3P3 and uh, 3D1, 
Now here are one electron, here are three electrons, here um, one electron is there in a D subshell that is one. Total uh, unpaid electrons are five. That's why for this uh, maximum covalency, maximum covalency is uh, five and uh, maximum uh, oxidation uh, state of phosphorus also plus five. 5 is the covalency, combining capacity and oxidation state is plus 5. Now here the 1s orbital, 3p orbital, 1d orbital, maximum is shows sp3d hybridization. So it is sp3d, it shows a pentagonal means a trigonal bipyramidal, trigonal bipyramidal structure. So I will explain complete story about this. And here the phosphorus generally are two important isotopic forms like uh, 15 to 16, like uh, 15 to 17, like uh, isotopic uh, important forms. And here the phosphorus isotopic uh, forms shows here the allotropic uh, forms. Allotropic uh, forms of uh, phosphorus, they are already given to you, that is uh, white that is yellow, pale yellow like, red, scarlet, violet and uh, black. These are the some important uh, allotropic forms of phosphorus. This is the introduction about uh, phosphorus. Now here the hydride, hydrides of uh, phosphorus peak one important that is uh, pH 3 hydrates of phosphorus and some uh, oxides of phosphorus, oxy acids of phosphorus. Before that, uh, here are some important uh, stories of uh, oxo, oxo acids of phosphorus, some important oxo acids. So, to explain uh, oxides of hydrates of phosphorus and oxy acids of phosphorus. We want the story about uh, white phosphorus and red phosphorus story. After that, white and red phosphorus is preparation method of uh, hydride of phosphorus, then oxo acid. This is the complete explanation about phosphorus. First, we'll discuss about um, uh, phosphorus, white and red phosphorus. See here, <clears throat> white phosphorus and here uh, another one is uh, red phosphorus, red P, this is. Better we make uh, like a column in our textbook, uh, uh, paragraph wise given, while reading this uh, white and red phosphorus, better you create like a table and better you read this uh, white and red phosphorus story easy to remember. So the first thing is, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, uh, generally uh, one of the most important white means light, uh, white or uh, pale yellow, pale yellow solidities. And uh, pale yellow solid, it is generally translucent, translucent, Scent waxy solid it is, waxy solid substance. We know here uh, red generally it is a uh, red uh, allotropic form, red phosphorus generally it uh, possesses, possesses uh, gray luster it is, shining in nature, gray luster it is. Now second one is uh, White phosphorus, it uh, glow in uh, dark. It uh, glow in dark means it shows one important property, chemiluminescence. Chemiluminescence property. Is it glow in a dark? But it is not. 
donata donata glow in a dark this is third one is generally it is a uh, insoluble insoluble in uh, water that's why white phosphorus white p is a uh, stored in a uh, water h2o but soluble in a uh, but uh, soluble in a uh, carbon disulfide cs2 very very important but soluble in a uh, carbon disulfide here uh, third one it, it is uh, it is uh, insoluble it is uh, insoluble in uh, both water and uh, cs2 carbon disulfide now here uh, fourth one is here generally white phosphorus uh, exist uh, exist as uh, a discrete uh, uh, tetrahedral p4 molecule one uh, separate molecule as uh, p4 uh, molecule that uh, p4 molecule uh, bond angle between this um, bond angle is uh, 60 degrees and has um, high high a uh, bond angle strain bond angle strain due to the bond angle strain due to this due to this yeah the uh, white phosphorus uh, white p is uh, more reactive more reactive than uh, red phosphorus than red p here uh, it uh, exist red phosphorus it uh, exist uh, as uh, polymeric polymeric uh, tetrahedral polymeric uh, tetrahedral a uh, link uh, takes place tetrahedral a uh, linkage due to this uh, due to this it is uh, less reactive less reactive or it is uh, inactive it is uh, inactive very very important uh, conditions main important conditions so i'll uh, reading white and red phosphorus better you create like this and better you read one table than easy to find out uh, differences just i'll draw the white and red phosphorus based on that uh, uh, I'll show how many sigma bonds are present around one phosphorus in white and red phosphoruses. When he asked in uh, KCET examination based on this white phosphorus, in one tetrahedral discrete molecule, how many total number of sigma bonds are present? Here, uh, reactivity also very, very important. Why it is uh, more reactive? Bond angle strain is small. That bond angle is here, uh, 60 degrees. Here I'll draw here above this uh, table. I'll draw just uh, note on this table also. Last point here. It's a uh, white phosphorus uh, structure is like this. I uh, are P. This is P and this is P. Here P. These are uh, tetrahedrally arranged like this. Here uh, bond and here uh, bond is there. Here uh, bond angle is 60 degrees. Now, sigma bonds are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, in a white phosphorus, white P, that is in a P4 molecule, 6 P and P total sigma bonds are there. Very, very important this is. One year asked in a CET examination. Whereas, in case of red phosphorus, these uh, white phosphoruses are uh, linked like this. Palmeric uh, tetrahedral concept, this is like this. There is no ER like this. ER link up takes place. Link up. Again, it is phosphorus like this. Then again, link up uh, takes place. This is the polymeric uh, tetrahedral link uh, takes place and so on. So, due to the polymeric uh, tetrahedral uh, link, uh, it's reactivity is generally less. That's why 
it is uh, inactive less reactive than compared to the white phosphorus it is more reactive less reactive this is a uh, tetrahedral p4 that is uh, red phosphorus polymeric uh, tetrahedral structures very very important so better you read uh, this table and remember this table and uh, from textbook analyze all these point all are available tomorrow i'll explain about uh, uh, preparation methods of uh, hydrates of phosphorus that is phosphin then uh, oxo acids of phosphorus and some important uh, points maximum next class monday i'll complete okay so already uh, p block elements uh, and say textbook uh, given and the material college material also given better you follow that uh, material okay take care